Now the first stage is to make sure that all your equipment is clean. So just using a little bit of detergent um, to wash these buckets and then there's also a little bit of um, disinfectant in there as well. So I'm getting, getting a hand from the, the young one. Righto, so I'm about to start the meat processing stage. Two sharp knives, very important. Um, and then I've also got all my meat here. So this meat is a combination of sort of off cuts and there's also some fat as well that I've trimmed away from a couple of deer that I've shot as well. So a few scraps there as well. Nice fat section. Um, a few more fat pieces. So that's off a really nice fellow that I shot not long ago. Um, and then in here we've got a whole hind quarter. It's off a fellow. And another hind quarter there. So got a bit of meat to work with, which is good. And as you'll see, some of it's a little bit, little bit chilled. Um, but you want to keep it as cool as you can while you're processing it. Um, just so you avoid things like bacteria growth. Um, so when I'm actually chopping it up, it's actually semi-frozen, which is what you want it to be. So this will be brilliant. I haven't actually got um, any pork that I'm going to be using today. I've got some in the freezer, but I've got so much um, venison fat that I'm probably just going to see how I go with that. And then if I need more, I'll shoot out to the freezer and grab some pork jowls. Nice piece of um, venison fat. And you can just feed it straight down through the... Uh, through the mincer like that. So the long strips are the best ones. Chuck that into the bucket. They don't need to be too um, too thin, like that'll feed down the throat of the mincer. So yeah, this fat came off a really nice fellow that I shot. It's sort of been off all across the hind quarters um, and a little bit through the um, through the back stake as well, sitting across the top of it. So this is your meat bucket, and I've worked my way through a bit of the venison fat as well. So in terms of like storing the scraps and things like that, I normally just, when I'm cutting up scraps straight off the animal, I normally just put them into a, a glad sealable bag. Um, and then for the bigger pieces, like this sort of stuff, I generally put it into a black plastic bag or a couple of supermarket bags and just try and get it as, as tight as you can sort of at the top um, so there's limited amount of freezer burn and that sort of thing. Well, I shot one at about 70 metres and the other one at probably about 120 using the 7mm 08. Now I was trying out the new um, ELDX so they are like a ballistic tip projectile um, and I can tell you that they are extremely accurate well, especially out of my, my gun anyway um, I took them down to the range and um, have a look at that the amount of fat on those um, took the took the gun down to the range and it's putting a new scope on it. I got the um, the loophole VX1 3 to 9 by 50. So I was giving that a wee crack and yeah got it sighted in and it's shooting an inch and a half groups at 200 meters which I'm very very impressed with. Um, three shots into a one and a half inch group. Out of the Tika T3. And it's mounted on a um, uh, 20 MOA Picatinny rail, EGW.
and the rings I believe are uh, the loophole PRW high ring um, so it's yeah it's a, it's a great combination I'm very happy with that look at that look at that that is just delightful so what I'll do with the knife is I'll separate it so take that off put that in the fat pile put that in the meat pile um, but if you've got all of this venison um, fat you might as well use it Sounds like World War Three. Maybe about to start before Donald Trump starts it. Domesticated World War Three. blood damage, we generally just skim that off and throw that away. And, um, you probably can't put it in but you're generally on the safer side and just take it out, peel it off. Generally it's just normally quite superficial on there. You can almost peel off the fascia and it will come out of there so get rid of all that sort of blood damaged meat if you can. Hey Cookie, there's my mate here. Cookie's on the prowl. What are you looking for, Cookie? Hey? He smells something. Most people like to run their sausages at about 40 to 50% fat. Um, being a personal trainer, I try and keep it on the leaner end of that spectrum. Um, and most of my sausages are sort of around about the 20% fat to 80% uh, meat but then also within that composition as well you've got your herbs, your spices, your salts, your peppers, um, your sauces and your flavourings and whatnot. so everyone's a bit different but the, the venison meat is, is renowned for being a bit lean so you do need to have that, that fat content with it and whether that is venison fat that you're using or pork fat that's up to you as I said I normally use the pork fat because it's got a bit more of a neutral flavour <clears throat> and the venison can be a little bit more uh, gamey if you like a bit stronger but uh, on this occasion I've got heaps of venison fat so I'm going to use it time to cut up this bad boy this is one of the hind quarters Prime meat. Now, because I don't have any uh, red stag or red deer in the freezer and it's approaching barbecue season, I need to get some sausages. And I took it out last night. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty solid. But um, just work from the outside in, so the outside will be what's thawed out um, overnight. Cut your sections off. Gee, that looks good, doesn't it? The fallow is just such a tender, tender meat. And uh, I could probably eat that right now, actually. Now, an important ingredient as well that you've got to remember to put in is a little bit of deer fur. Very important for the fibre. <laughs> so just cut through. Work your way through. Look at this prime meat. Difficult to be doing this to some fellow hindquarters, but as I said, we need some barbecue sausage. Barbecue season on the way. Now just to mention as well, before you start getting into all this cutting and everything, you want to make sure that your hands are clean of course, um, and that everything's disinfected, so the board, um, your knives, your hands, can wear gloves if you want to. I'll wear gloves further down the line when I'm actually getting into the <clears throat> the mashing the mashing part of the business. There you go, look at that. That's how you want it. 
Okay, so this is your hind quarter bone all uh, stripped off. So I might give that to Cookie. Um, one thing that you want to avoid doing is using these tendons. Some people throw that into their sausage mix, and I'm not, I'm not a fan of chewing on that sort of stuff. So I leave it out. You can take out a section of this body of the meat, which is fine. Um, but yeah, just take off what you can. The setup that I use, this is a, a George Foreman mincer. Um, electric, of course. Um, pretty straightforward in terms of setting them up. You put your centerpiece in there. This one's got the function of um, on and then reverse as well if your meat gets a bit stuck. A bit of noise attached to it, of course. Um, these are the different pieces that you're going to be using. So that's the driving pin which goes in there. And then in terms of your gauzes as well, um, I've got a couple of different ones. The one just there is the one that I use mainly. However, if you want to go to like a, a finer or a thicker um, mince product, you can use those ones. And this is your, just your cap which goes on the end. So that there goes on the top, like so. This is all aluminium, and I'll give it a good um, disinfectant and um, detergent treatment before I use it. So we'll leave those ones aside. Um, inside here you've got your your cutting blade so it goes on there like that and then you've got your fix attachment which sits into the groove so you can get it in there so it goes onto there like that and then across the front you've got your screw cap Side here, you've got your attachment, which just makes sure that everything's nice and tight, so that holds everything firm. Um, as I said, I'll just give this a quick clean up before I throw any meat down it. So, in terms of the thickness of the the throat, um, you know, it's sort of about that wide. Some of the commercial ones obviously have a much um, much wider throat on them. And then we're going to be using this as well. This is just the, the meat stuffer. So when you've got your meat, you're just going to be pushing it down and feeding it in. Meantime, I am going to start mincing up some of this the venison that I've got in here. Um, there's probably about seven kilos of venison there at the moment. So I'll get that all minced up and I'll do the, the fat as well. So what you want to have underneath this, you just put in a, a bucket or a bowl underneath that to catch the, the mince. Right, so as you can see, I've processed a bit of the mince. Um, I've got three bowls, just because what I'm going to do now is I've still got more across there to sort out, still got that hind quarter and then a, a, a whole um, bag of scraps as well. So what I can do with this stuff is I can put this straight in the fridge because the containers are not too big um, and then also I've got the option as well if I want to do different um, flavoured sausages I can put a mix in this one, you know honey and soy or this one could be herbs or this one could be onion and sage or whatever so you can keep them like that um, but I'm going to mainly be doing a a fennel, fennel and herb um, sausage today. So, yeah, as you can see in in this um, in this particular bowl and all the other ones actually, there is a reasonable amount of fat in there already. Um, so you can see that there, the white, that's all your your fat um, fat particles. So there is an existing amount of fat in there already, um, and that's why I generally try and aim for about twenty percent of added pork fat or added venison fat bearing in mind that there is an existing amount of fat already in this meat that I am using today um, so yeah it's good I mean they are sausages at 
the end of the day. And a lot of people throw some crap into them, but I personally would prefer just to take a little bit of time to clear off some of that stuff which you don't really want to eat. It's clean as the meat up a little bit. Take that off. So that's all the stringy stuff, really tough, which clogs up your mincer. So you want to get rid of it, don't put it in your sausages. section here just use your thumbs as much as you can work through the, um, the fascia lift as much off as you can so it seems to come away Get your thumb in there fingers in there run the knife through just clear it off happy days and we're just gonna blitz through the, the fat now so we're going to do the same procedure, you just throw it straight down into the mincer and it out pops as uh, minced fat. So we're going to get into that now, I'll just show you a quick bit of this. Obviously there's a change in colour, it goes from red to white. Just taking the, the screw cap off and I'm just going to actually just check if these blades are still okay. Sometimes they get... Um, tangled up with a bit of sinew and things. Um, this one's actually not looking very bad. It's looking pretty good to be fair. Yep, and that's all still fat. Cool. So I've actually done about three quarters of the months and the blade has not even got tangled up once. I mean there's a tiny bit of sinew there but to get through three quarters of what I've done, so I've probably processed about close to 20 kilos a mince now and the blade hasn't clogged up. Now one thing to be mindful of as well when you are doing your sausage, making the sausage, is that depending on how, um, how much meat you've got, it can actually take a number of hours by the time you've cut through your meats, your venison, your pork um, and then you've got to run each of them both through the mincer and then you've got to you know, put them into the fridge you've got to keep things nice and clean when you're working as well um, so yeah just allow yourself time because you don't want to be rushing it, it doesn't really make it much fun um, so yeah just tuck them into some uh, fish fillets for lunch and uh, having a wee spell and then after lunch I'll do some of the measurements about how much venison and how much um, fat and then we'll start getting into the mixing putting some herb in there but a herb herb and thinking about you know also using some of that mince that I have done I actually just pack it that up into small little snap lock bags um, into sort of 300 gram weights and put that into the freezer, use that for spag bowl and um, you know cottage pie and, and all the rest of it so make sure you save a bit of mince for those sort of projects um, the first time I did sausages I sort of sausaged everything up and then I got to the end and the missus was like well where's the where's the mince and I'm like oh yeah forgot, forgot about that so I'll just put aside a bit of mince now and um, it's great to have those in the in the freezer. Like that fellow fellow mince is just incredibly good. Right, so I'm just going to work through this big massive ball of, I guess it's called scrap meat. So this is sort of the stuff you're cutting off the animal at the time and it's hanging up, and you just throw it into a bag and say, oh, yep, that'll be for the sausages. So I'm sort of working through this now. Um, you can see this sort of the bits will sort of pull out and you know break out into sections but it'll be very dense in the middle there very very frozen still so that's sometimes why it's actually not a bad thing because you can work on the 
the bits that thaw out faster at the start of your session and then this sort of stuff you can just work into it as you go because I'm probably a couple of hours um, into sort of this project today um, so I've done all the other mincing and I just need to throw this in as well um, but yeah it's always a great way to um, use your scrap meat put it into sausages Keep the wife happy, get a number of these done. Just want to try and squeeze out the hair if you can. So I generally just push the meat down to the bottom. And then just leave a little hole in the top there. Fold it back on itself. And then just run the finger along there. And getting it all closed up. As you can see, there's hardly any air in there. So if you don't have a vacuum packer, you can do it uh, do it this way. Obviously, a good idea as well to to label your packets as to what's in there. If you've got quite a few items in the freezer, it can get a little bit confusing, um, particularly if you're going to give it away as well. Just to giving it to people, they know that it's going to be better than their supermarket mints. So yeah, wild mints. Okay, so what is going on now is I have got some hog casings. So you can go and get these um, from a butcher supply store in your area. Um, essentially they're just a thin, thin sheath. And um, because I've made some sausages in the past, I had left them in this, um, it's just basically a solution of just fresh water and grinding in a, a bunch of salt and just it's been preserved in there for the last couple of months. Now what I'm doing now is taking it from the salted container across and into um, this one here which is just some tepid uh, fresh water. So just to get the skins ready um, to put them put some sausages or some sausage meat into them so they just come in really long lengths um, get your scales out and you've got your your venison and your pork fat um, this was the scrap bucket that I've been using so I've just decided that um, there's enough fat content in there for me to um, use what's in there and I've just added about another half a kilo of pork fat to that so what you need to do now is put it on the scales so I'm just gonna say that the plastic weighs nothing put her on take her off and I've got 8.5 kilos so I'll do a recipe around that weight 8.5 kilos of sausage meat okay so the next um, element is getting the spices together so I use the, the whole peppercorns and the coarse rock salt and um, I've got a I've got a helper here so we're not quite at the crushing stage yet but we're at the, the mixing and I'm about to throw in some fennel now um, now with this fennel I have also toasted it so I just put it in a skillet and warmed and it up this one. we'll put it in there soon shall we yes. so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the same amount um, the fennel's got quite a sort of a strong peppery uh, very herby type of a flavor
more than one sausage. Yeah. It's not spicy. 100. 100 sausages. venison sausage you know around the time of summer or barbecues you will have uh, an endless queue of people wanting to have a bit of sauce bar. everybody enjoys a bit of sausage righto so I've got my two batches of sausage this one here is the honey and soy and this one here is the herbs so the fennel and rosemary and sage and all of those other lovely bits and pieces garlic salt pepper and then I've also got my bags here of, um, of venison mince too so keep the wife happy and then there's a little bit of leftover venison fat there so what I'm going to do now is twist them off and put them into these snack packs so depending on the size of the family well, I've got two little ones plus the wife um, you put a certain number of sausages in it should be good hope you enjoyed the video um, and learn something from it. I mean this is how I do the sausages, people obviously do them very differently to me but this is probably my sixth or seventh batch of sausages that I've done and every time uh, I give them away to people they want more so yeah definitely uh, a good result with the, the flavours that we go for and if people want to you know, give me any feedback or anything like that that would be great if you want to order a sausage uh, <laughs> I uh, probably won't have any left. <laughs> yeah, happy hunting. Cheers.